In this video, let us try to understand what is in a household quartz clock and how it works. This model was made to scale using SOLIDWORKS software and kinematically simulated to observe the mechanical motion of each component. Here, we see the clock running at a normal speed for a minute with a sweeping motion and not ticking. And then I have sped up the video 5 times to have observable motion in the minute hand as well. This model does not have a ticking motion mainly because of a software issue that I faced but such sweeping clocks are also widely available commercially and have virtually the same mechanism. The construction differs from one clock to another but the principal parts explained here will be same. The clock movement, however, which houses all the working components of the clock are standardized with respect to their external dimensions which we will discuss further. The clock movements can have a non-stepping motor as in here or a stepper motor to have a ticking motion as in most clocks. A quartz clock has the same basic principle of an old pendulum clock that is a simple harmonic motion is produced, counted and computed electronically or mechanically and the time is suitably displayed. However, quartz clocks were found to be more accurate and had very less errors induced with changing temperatures. The first quartz clock was built in 1927 at Bell Telephone Laboratories but the wider commercial use of quartz watches and clocks started in the 1960s with the development of cheap semiconductor logic chips. Here we see a walk around view of this clock model. As mentioned earlier, the clock shape and construction may differ but the movement is standardized and separately available commercially and other basic parts of the clock remain relatively same. The clock is powered by a AA sized battery and is designed to be hanged from a nail. The same clock movement can also be used on table clocks and other configurations. Movements are also available with alarm function, a decorative pendulum, chime, etc. based on required functions. After the walk around, we see the clock here in a different view such as a nearly isometric view as seen here. Now let us get rid of all the parts and have just the clock movement on the screen. The video is slowed down here as we see all the parts of the clock appear in the order they are generally assembled in. The clock body is put over the clock movement and a dial is pasted on the inside of the clock body. Here, the movement is secured by a movement nut. The hour and the minute hands are pressed in and are aligned such that when the hour hand is indicating any hour mark, the minute hand points to the 12 o'clock position. Hands and the dial are protected by a glass and a plastic ring holds it in place. The movement in the rear of the body is also protected by a car which has a slot for hanging from a nail. Everything is screwed into their positions. Here we see the clock's parts in an exploded view, pulling everything apart. And we see everything coming back together and assembled as it was before. Let us now concentrate on the clock movement itself. A clock movement is kind of a package with all functional parts of the clock pre-assembled inside. It is attached to the clock by a snap fit or a nut. It is available commercially and is standardized with respect to its external dimensions. Square shaped with sides 56 mm, rounded corners and a thickness of 15.5 mm. Our movement here has a transparent car, so few moving parts are visible. It is powered by a AA size battery. Let us see a complete walk around of the movement. A quartz clock is so called because it uses a quartz crystal oscillator. Quartz or silicon dioxide is widely available, inexpensive and is mostly stable with temperature changes. Silicon is also the major constituent of sand. It is cut into the shape of a tuning fork 
a very tiny one and is housed in a cylindrical package with two leads attached to the circuit board. Quartz is a piezoelectric crystal. The oscillator is precisely manufactured such that when a voltage is applied across it, the crystal oscillates 32,768 times, which is 2 power 15 times, slightly above the human hearing range. Let us hide a few parts of the movement now, showing only the inner components. The magnet wheel here is rotating at 30 rpm. The gear ratios are kept such that the minute hand takes a 6 degree motion for every complete revolution of the second's hand, hence indicating passage of 1 minute on the dial. Similarly, the hour hand takes a revolution of 30 degrees for 1 revolution of the minute's hand, indicating 1 hour on the dial. Each gear of the clockwork meshes with the pinion of the other. We now see only the top layer of the gears which were visible initially with the transparent lid on. From right to left, we see the magnet wheel or rotor, an intermediate wheel, center second wheel and the third wheel. Magnet wheel has a magnetic core and a pinion to drive the rest of the gear train and meshes with the intermediate wheel. Center second wheel has a long shaft, part of which protrudes out of the moment to which the second hand is attached. The third wheel transfers motion from this layer to the gears below the intermediate plate. The gears below the intermediate plate are seen now. The pinion of the third wheel drives the cannon wheel, which has a gear, pinion and a long pipe protruding out of the moment to which minute hand is attached. Its pinion meshes with the minute wheel, which transfers motion to the R wheel, which again has a shorter but larger diameter pipe onto which the R hand is attached. The cannon and the minute wheels are on the same axis and hence form a reverted gear train. The long shaft of the center second wheel sticks through these pipes. We now see the electronic parts of the moment. Here we see a printed circuit board with required electronic circuitry. The quartz crystal oscillator is seen here attached at the top. An electromagnetic coil is soldered to the printed circuit board and a magnetic core passes through it. The magnet wheel is placed in this core. We now see the battery contacts and the AA battery powering the clock. When externally excited by a voltage, the quartz oscillator oscillates at 32768 Hz which is counted by the circuitry. The signal is reduced to a 1 Hz signal which as a digital pulse represents the passage of each second. Pulses are sent at a regular period to the electromagnetic coil seen here which drives the magnet wheel at the required speed. We are seeing the rest of the moment coming back together which as explained earlier drives the hands such that the passage of time is indicated as hours, minutes and seconds on a graduated dial. We can now see the exploded view of the clock, each part still in motion. and how it goes back together again into the assembly. The knob seen here on the outside meshes with the minute wheel and is used to set time. So this is the basic principle of working of a quartz clock, thank you.